Welcome to the world of chili. Today we're going to talk about all the infinite varieties of chili and chili ingredients that there are. And what we're going to stress today is that you need to try different recipes, find a recipe that your family enjoys of chili, and then expand from there. So I am Denise Smith. I'm the Nutrition and Food Safety Extension Educator for Niobrara County in Lusk, Wyoming. And um, our family really enjoys chili. And especially during the cold, cold winter months, last week would have been a great chili week um, here in Lusk because we were way below zero and it would have tasted really good. So. Today we're going to share with you some basic chili recipes and then talk a lot about varieties of chili and different things you can do with chili. So what, what we see in front of us is a lot of the standard ingredients that go into chili. And what we're going to, as you look at your recipes being provided today, we're starting out with a basic chili recipe. And what it has in it are hamburger and onions. And then um, you could, if you wanted to, put some chopped green pepper in there. And then we're starting with the beans. Um, our family likes kidney beans. And so that's usually what I put in the chili. But you could use black beans, chili beans, pinto beans, um, any kind of beans that your family likes. Or you could do a mix and match several different kinds of beans in one pot of chili. The next is tomatoes. And for a, this basic recipe, it calls for tomato sauce. This is a thinner kind of more watery chili. I like thicker chili, so usually I kind of mix and match or tomato sauce and maybe some crushed tomatoes or diced tomatoes. And if you um, like the flavor of like chili in your tomatoes, some, some hot chilies, you could get Rotel tomatoes or a store brand tomatoes that comes with chilies already into the tomatoes. If you like it even thicker, add a little tomato paste. Um, this chili is cooked just in a kettle on the stove, so it needs to simmer um, for a while. I like to have my chili simmer all day as it adds a lot more flavor as it, as it simmers and the flavors can meld. Um, this recipe only has chili powder and some salt in it, but you can mix and match the spices and herbs that you like in chili. You can add, I always put pepper in mine. You can add garlic powder, maybe some cumin. Um, most of the time, I always add a couple tablespoons of sugar it kind of balances out the acid in the tomatoes and makes it a little more mellow. But this one can simmer on the stove and um, all day you may need to add more liquid as it simmers, as it evaporates. But again, I think um, chili tastes better the longer it simmers. The other thing you can do with chili is in the morning is put it in your crock pot, um, turn it on high for say an hour before you head off to class or to work. Before you leave the house, turn it down to low and let it just simmer all day long. The trick to this is you cannot just put your raw meat into this. You need to either brown your hamburger or brown whatever meat you're going to be using to put into your crock pot. Um, when you're adding your beans, um, if you're using canned beans, always rinse your beans off, put them in a colander, drain the kind of soupy liquid off of them, and then rinse them off. 
Um, the rinsing removes the extra sodium off the beans and makes them also a little less gassy. So always rinse your beans really well. Having a crock pot is an excellent way to cook chili. When you get home in the evening at five o'clock, your supper is, is ready to go. You don't have to stop and do that. All your prep would be in the morning, adding your cooked meat, your chopped up vegetables, your tomatoes, whatever, and your beans. Um, another um, way that many people cook chili is with the dried beans. And you can see them layered here on top of my jar. This is a gift mixture that we made at Christmas um, on one of your videos um, from Gifts in a Jar. And it contains the dry beans and all the spices and herbs already in one jar. So if you're going to do a chili recipe that calls for dried beans, um, this recipe, since everything is mixed together, you would just need to simmer this about three hours to soften the beans up and, and have them ready to go. So if you want to use just dry beans out of the bag, you need to soak those. The directions for soaking beans are on the back of the bag. And then again, you need to drain that soaking water off, rinse them off really good, and go ahead and cook with them just as you would um, your canned beans. This is a longer process, so I, I'm kind of always the last minute person, so I don't ever um, take time usually to soak beans and get them ready, but they are more cost effective if, if you need, want to go that route. Another recipe that my family really enjoys is called um, hamburger corn pone pie, which is basically your chili mixture on the bottom, and you can just make your favorite um, chili mixture with hamburger, tomatoes, um, kidney beans, whatever. Put it in the bottom of an eight by eight inch baking dish, then make a recipe of chili or cornbread, spread that on top of your chili mixture, and bake it in the oven at 425 for about 20 minutes. So that's kind of a fun recipe. You can either start from scratch with your chili and make it especially for this recipe. Or if you have a huge pot of chili and you've eaten two or three meals of just bowls of chili and you're ready to use it in a little different way, Take some of that chili, fill up your eight by eight baking dish half full, and top it with your cornbread mixture. So some of the um, other varieties, if you have a pot of chili that, like we said, you're, you're tired of just eating a plain old bowl of chili, um, some varieties is maybe make a chili taco. We do that a lot at our house. Take a flour tortilla, Put some chili on it, then top it with your normal um, taco toppings, sour cream, salsa, um, some chopped onions. Roll it up and eat it kind of like a, I guess you would call it an enchilada shape because we roll them up, but we call them chili tacos. Um, that uses up some chili. You could also make chili dogs for lunch. You could make chili nachos chili fries, um, top a baked potato with chili, um, make some pigs in a blanket with hot dogs rolled in biscuits, and then top, bake those, and then top those with chili. So there's lots of different things that you can start with a basic recipe and expand it so you don't have to keep eating this pot of chili for a week. The other things, um, if you are just eating your bowl of chili in a bowl, vary your toppings that you put on it. Maybe tonight we have salsa and um, sour cream. You could do shredded cheese, some um, chopped green onions, some chopped onions, some guacamole, some Fritos. So it doesn't have to be the same exact meal 
over and over and over again. The other thing um, that I have never done is chili does well in an Instapot. And right now there are a ton of recipes on the, um, like Pinterest or the internet on chili recipes for the Instapot. So if you have an Instapot, this may be a great um, time to do some experimenting with different proteins, with different beans, with different um, flavors. And the nice thing about chili is it freezes well. So make a big batch, put it into some smaller containers. Um, we often freeze single size portions of big meals like this. And then <coughs> when it's time for a lunch, um, you just take one out of the freezer, stick it in your lunch box and heat it up at lunchtime. Um, so chili is fantastic frozen. So make yeah. a big crock pot of it, eat it a meal or two out of it, freeze the rest of it, and on days when you don't have time to cook, you're ready to go. So this morning as we were looking um, on the internet just to see what was available, we found just a few recipes that are uh, variations of chili. Um, the one we did, um, print out was uh, an Instapot recipe, and it did have all the different beans, pintos, blacks, kidneys in it. It did use rotel, and it did use some sugar to again balance that acid of the tomatoes. Um, prep time, they say is 10 minutes. It cooks for 18 minutes, and so within a half an hour, you can have a delicious um, total meal prepared. Cooking um, in a future video, but I like my Instapot. We make chicken noodle soup in it all the time, and it's like it sat and simmered all day on the stove, and it's cooked for half an hour or less. So, if you have an Instapot, this would be a good recipe to to give it a try. Yep. Some of the other interesting recipes where we found was a Cincinnati chili that you actually serve your chili over pasta. So we thought that was really different and the sauce had chocolate in it. So if you're a chocolate nut like I am, I think this would be an amazing thing to try. Um, I've never had chili over pasta. And the Cincinnati chili also has no beans. And no beans in it. So again, a little different variety. Then we found hillbilly chili. And this actually has spaghetti cooked into the pasta, into your chili recipe. So it's a little bit different. Um, they serve it with corn chips, sour cream. So if, if you need to stretch your pot of chili, if somebody shows up unexpectedly for supper and you're having chili, maybe add some pasta to it, which would stretch it out. Uh, we did talk about the chili cheese pigs in a blanket. Um, that was kind of a popular one on the internet. Then we got into some recipes that don't have beef in it. So chili is a recipe that you could use ground beef, you could use cubed beef, you could use um, wild game, you could use ground turkey, you could use ground lamb. So your meat possibilities are endless. Um, there are lots of recipes on the internet with chicken as the protein source. We did find one with a uh, ranch chili chicken that Aaron's gonna cook for supper tonight. It has chicken. It, this one again is done in the Instapot. Has some cream cheese and um, corn. So a little different take on, on traditional chili. Um, there's Southwest um, chicken chili, there's green chili, there's white bean chicken chili. Um, this one is chili mac instead of the spaghetti. This one has elbow macaroni in it. So again, um, and there was a that, I mean, basically you were serving it with 
already made macaroni and cheese. cheese. So, so again, utilizing maybe the chili that you made a few days ago and your kids' macaroni and cheese and you know have chili mac. And instead, oftentimes we think of um, kind of the hamburger, tomato, Italian version of that with macaroni. So this could be the more Mexican spicy with those kind of spices in it recipe. So we have barely touched on the world of chili today. It is a... a dish that is eaten in many cultures and um, we call it chili here but I think with the spices changing your spices and herbs and you could create a chili that um, reflects your family's likes and um, so do some experimenting do some internet surfing find a basic recipe that you think you would like and um, Try it out on your family. We will be putting the three recipes on with this video, but um, feel free to experiment. And let us know if you find one that's really different that you like, and, um, and then so we can try it as well. And the nice thing about chili is where we're cooking on the stovetop or in the crock pot, we can experiment and alter to our taste. So you get finished and it's like, well, it's lacking something. So add some different spices or add some different toppings and you're gonna be, you can't really screw it up. You can't. And food safety wise, as long as you keep it hot and you use up your leftovers within a few days or freeze those leftovers, um, food safety wise, just remember to keep hot foods hot, cold foods cold. So once it, you um, are done with it for the evening or whenever, get those leftovers into the refrigerator and get them cooled down before you want to use them for another meal. So with that, happy chili cooking and um, enjoy those recipes over the next two or three months while it's still cold.